Hello there Future ACCs, this is Vishnu Vijay, a proud FinTrammer and I welcome you all to another session of the revision short series for the Audit and Assurance paper. So folks, in this session we will be discussing about going concern or ISA 570 to be a bit more specific. Okay folks, so what is going concern all about? It's basically the ability of an organization to operate for the foreseeable future, isn't it? To put it very simply. Now, what is the uh, auditor's responsibility regarding going concern? The auditor has to ensure that the financial statements are being prepared on the appropriate basis, isn't it? Because if the organization is a going concern, then the financial statement is prepared on a going concern basis. However, if the organization is not a going concern, then the financial statement will be prepared on a breakup basis. This is the basic accounting concept, isn't it? And the auditor will have to make sure that this particular principle is being followed as well. Now, moving on to certain situations. So folks, there is a management's responsibility. Okay, folks, it is the manager's responsibility to make an assessment of the going concern status of the organization on an annual basis. And as the auditors, what we have to do is we have to make sure as to whether this assessment is appropriate or not, to put it very simply, isn't it? So we will be looking at several situations that can occur and the impact on the auditor's report as a result of this situation. Okay, folks. So first of all, let's take a look at situation one. Situation one is where the management has made a particular assessment on the financial statement, sorry, on the going concern status of the organization. And the assessment was, let's say, right. The organization is a going concern and the financial statement has been prepared on a going concern basis. In such an instance, the auditor's opinion will be unmodified, isn't it? There is no issue, so we will provide an unmodified opinion in an unmodified report. It's a clean report, as simple as that. Now, let's take a look at another instance. The manager's assessment was right. The organization is not a going concern and the financial statement has been prepared on a breakup basis. Yet again, everything has been done appropriately, isn't it? However, there is an impact, a small impact on the uh, auditor's report because the auditor's report will be providing an unmodified opinion. There's no doubt about it. However, there will also be an emphasis on matter paragraph or EOMP paragraph as well. Okay, folks, mentioning the fact that the organization is not a going concern. Okay, folks, and of course, there would be references given to the appropriate disclosures within the notes to financial statements as well. So that is basically the, uh, the next instance. Now let's take a look at another one. So what if the management's assessment is wrong? The company was a going concern. However, the financial statements have been prepared on a breakup basis. That's wrong, isn't it? That's like in the financial statement would be wrong as a result. And of course, there's another instance as well. The management assessment was yet again wrong. The company was not a going concern, but the financial statement has been prepared on a going concern basis. In both these instances, we would provide an adverse opinion. Okay, folks, so that's basically uh, the first situation is all about. Okay, folks, you have to understand several instances and what our opinion would be in each of these as well. Okay, folks, so learn that and it could be tested in the exam when you are required to, uh, you know, uh, point out the impact on the auditor's report due to a, cer a certain issue in relation to going concern. Okay, folks, this is just situation one. Let's take a look at another situation. Okay, folks, what if the management has not made any assessment at all? In such a situation, we have an inability, as auditors, we have an inability to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence, isn't it? And therefore, what we do is we issue a disclaimer opinion. Okay, folks, that's basically what we're going to do when, when, we, when the management has not conducted any assessment. Now, let's take a look at situation three now, shall we? So, folks, in situation three, the management is kind of doubtful regarding the going concern status. Okay, folks, there are several uncertainties and it is possible. Okay, folks, there are several uncertainties in the industry or the business environment in which the audit client operates in. And therefore, the management is kind of uncertain as to whether, as to what the going concern status of the company is. Okay, folks, so in such a situation, what the management has to do is they have to make the adequate disclosures of the uncertainties regarding going concern within the notes to financial statements. And the auditor, what we have to do is we have to ensure as to whether these disclosures are accurate or not. 
Okay, folks, that's basically it. Have they provided the provided the adequate level of disclosures within an ownership financial statement, or is it inadequate? If it is uh, the adequate level of uh, you know disclosures, then what we do is we we provide a unmodified opinion. However, we will also mention a material uncertainty regarding going concern paragraph, or in other words, an MURGC paragraph will also be provided. Okay, folks, along with the unmodified opinion. Now. Let's take a look at the next instance. What if they provide inadequate opinion? Sorry, inadequate disclosures. In such case, we have to assess as to whether the particular disclosure or this particular you know, uh, issue, is it material or material and pervasive? If it is material but not pervasive, it, it's entirely up to the judgment of the auditors. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. So if it is material but not pervasive, then we provide a qualified except for opinion. However, if it is material and pervasive, then we provide an adverse opinion. Okay, folks. So these are basically some of the situations that we have to keep in consideration because it all depends upon the scenario information, isn't it? Sometimes they uh, may have conducted a particular uh, management assessment and they might be a bit doubtful of the going concern status or they may have uh, conducted the assessment incorrectly so based on you know these uh, you know these charts that we have just discussed we should be able to take the right decision on what kind of opinion should be provided as well okay folks so keep this in mind so that's basically all I want to cover in this particular session. And of course, if you're interested in conducting a full-fledged uh, revision of the entire Audit and Action syllabus, then feel free to check that out within our revision bootcamp. The link is provided down in the description. And of course, stay tuned for more informative videos. This is Vishnu Jai, signing off for now.